A very good morning to everyone and welcome to our webinar about recording guidelines for this new interim digital solution. So we do know that there have been lots of doubts about how do we go about it. While it's a very exciting proposition, this new solution that Trinity has brought out, it is a little frightening because it involves technology. And uh, we are not uh, very comfortable with that. So we thought we'd do this webinar to guide you through the steps and show you how easy it is to do this exam. So what do you have to do now? First of all, you've got to perform your three pieces or four pieces as per the syllabus. Because in some syllabi, it is the requirement is four pieces, like in singing at the higher grades. Performing those pieces, you will record them in one continuous take. Lots of questions about that. And every time I am reiterating, please remember it is one continuous take as if you were in the exam hall and the examiner was very much there. Instead of the examiner, you have your camera. So you will play piece one, whatever is the comfortable pause in between to turn your page or set up. You will take that much time and then play piece two and then piece three. So do remember that. Now the room you're using, there shouldn't be any unnecessary items in the camera view. Music stands should not hide the instrument or candidate. Remember, a lot in our exams is about correct technique and how you place your hands on the instrument or how you hold your instrument. So that should be very much visible to the examiners. Now, the only thing here is that the room needs to be a little quiet, not a little, fairly quiet because otherwise it'll harm the recording. Of course, it goes without saying that there should be enough space to perform effectively. It should conform to safety norms as far as electric equipment like wires and plug points go. Mobile phones in the room should be on airplane mode because you don't want the mobile ringing in the middle of your recording. Having said that, please remember you can do as many recordings as you would like and choose the best to upload for the exam. So you can start your experimentation from now, even though you're going to upload your recording in July. So try out, see what settings suit you, how the sound comes through, how the camera angles are, though we are going to guide you for that. The recording device you're using must be still and steady. It could be a camera, it could be a phone or a tablet, but you can either place it on a tripod or a steady surface, or it can be held by somebody who is filming you. The person holding it should make sure the microphone is not covered because we are recording audio as well as video. And the audio is really much more important than the video. Now, the instruments that you use in your exam should meet the demands of your pieces or songs. So this is just to tell you that uh, in case the instrument is not up to the mark, you could record at your teacher's house if that is allowed, or you could go to the school that you're learning at, again, keeping safety and social distancing guidelines in place. Or then you should wait for the face-to-face -face exam. If you have an accompanist, the camera angle should focus on the candidate. The accompanist does not need to be in view. We have mentioned that accompanied instruments can perform with the accompanist or a recorded accompaniment or solo, which we'd see later on in the presentation. So now we're going to look at some of the instruments how the camera needs to be placed and where the candidate needs to be sitting. 
So we are going to look at piano and electronic keyboard first. The demand for this is that both hands should be in the frame. The whole instrument need not be seen, but the range of keys being used in the piece should be in view. Feet should also be visible. If you look at the picture below, we have an electronic keyboard uh, exam. When I said that your cameras need to be on a steady surface, now a tripod is not available here, no problem. The phone is propped up steadily on a music stand. Please remember here that we don't want you to invest in equipment just to get this exam done. We can make a lot of improvisation in, with the things we have available with us. You just need to think carefully and see how it can be done best. So the camera here is on a stand at the proper height. Some arrows have been drawn to show you that the candidate is visible. The book is visible. Please remember book needs to be visible. And I did mention in my last webinar, if you attended, uh, in case you don't have the original book, you've left it behind at the teachers or you have not yet bought it and are unable to get it, you may use a scanned copy for just this time. But that should be destroyed right after you record the exam. The keys are visible, very much so. The hands are visible and the feet are visible. So this would be at about a distance of three to four feet from the candidate. So we've got short recordings of the exam. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but from where this camera was placed with no external uh, audio recording device, this was the result. you saw that it was a pretty nice sound quality. It may not have gone across too well to you all because of internet connections. And here I would just like to mention that in case connections go, you can log in again, or I get cut off, I will be back very soon. So you saw that the sound was fine and everything was in order. In the next, in the piano exam, here are two camera angles that have been used. The first one, the camera is on a tripod. All the keys are visible. The book is visible. You will see that it's not an original book. It's a copy. And the feet are visible. And there's also a little rabbit in the corner of your frame that is visible. But the back of the piano is not visible. You don't need that. In the second frame on the right side, which is not a very good position because you will see that the hands, the left hand is not visible. Neither are the feet visible nor the keys for the bass clef. So the left side photo is a good position. It doesn't need to be a tripod. Somebody could be holding the camera. Now, what you got after this is this recording in which the candidate has opted to play a duet and the duet has been part has been recorded by the teacher you will also hear that the teacher is giving a count in because otherwise you don't know where you're going to enter so after which it's a two bar count in after which the candidate will enter and we will listen to the duet and then we will see how much time is taken to trans, uh, go on to the next piece. One, two, three, four, 
to go to the next piece and this is about the amount of time taken a comfortable pause get ready and you can start okay so that was piano and keyboard now let's look at classical and acoustic guitar candidates need to be able to perform comfortably standing or sitting whatever you choose Classical guitar candidates will definitely need to sit on a chair without arms and the footstool or footrest should be there so that you can be in the proper performance position. Now, if you look at the classical guitar candidate, no footstool available, so improvised again. It's a child's play stool that has been used, a plastic stool and the position is absolutely perfect as long as the candidate is comfortable and the guitar is being held at the correct angle. Now, if you don't have a music stand, what can you do? Mostly, you know, we see that people are practicing with the music on the bed or propped up somewhere. Look at the middle picture. It's a chair with a back and the music has been clipped onto the chair. Now look at the first picture. When I say that please don't think of getting extra equipment or looking for soundproof rooms and things like that, this is what I mean. This is a simple recording done in a bedroom. The candidate is ready to play with the music on the chair and it's being recorded from a phone. The person holding the camera is perched on the dressing table, which is all absolutely fine. And we will see what happens with this recording. so on the three pieces are played uh, there's just one point i'd like to make here classical guitar and acoustic guitar are soft instruments because they're not mic'd nor are they uh, able to play like electric guitars so please check your sound you may have to make a few adjustments your Mezzo fortes may have to go up to a forte and your piano may not be heard at a P. You could have to play it at an MP. So please trial and error and I'm sure you'll get there. So please experiment from now and get to that comfortable level where the recording comes out clear and in order. So let's look at rock and pop here for the guitar and the bass. Now, rock and pop, as you know, requires backing tracks, especially it's compulsory for song one and song three. 
If song two is from the book, it is compulsory for that too. In case you have an own choice or an own composition for song two, you may perform it without the backing track. That is an option and it's all there in our syllabus. However, you cannot, like in the classical, perform all your pieces without backing track because that is one of the uh, assessment criteria as far, far as the examiners go, how you are able to cope with the backing track. So this is again a simple setup in the same room. You will see on the picture on the right, which is a close up, the same chair is holding the music. There is a phone there now for the uh, backing track. That phone, if you look on the table, there is a processor here. We'll be giving you more details on how you can play your backing tracks. The phone is plugged into the processor and there is an output from there going to the speakers of the computer. And it's coming, the sound is coming through that. It's going into the processor and out through that. We will give you more details. And somebody externally is recording that. So the backing track also needs to be heard as well as the uh, performer. So we look at how this came about once uh, the recording was done. A uh, word of caution here, wires so close to the candidate is a bit of a no-no because it doesn't follow the safety norms and we don't want any accidents happening. So make sure wires are stored away. We've done some things wrong in these recordings to show you what is right and what is wrong. So listen to this. Candidate operating the backing track. Okay, so this is what came through. Perfectly balanced in rock and pop, balance is very, very important. Uh, I have a little request. I've just received a message from my panelists that I'm not going to take names. There are people, a couple of people who are putting irrelevant comments in the chat and the question and answers. Please, Confine your comments and questions to this webinar, the recording webinar, if there's any questions here. Please do not go around putting irrelevant questions. It makes it very difficult for the panelists who are there, who are striving to answer everything you are asking. There are a couple of people doing this. Please do not uh, do this. Thank you. All right, so moving on from the rock and pop guitar, we are going to singing, which is the classical singing. Now here, the guidelines are that an on-camera view is recommended with the candidate's whole body in view. If the performance includes some movement, which may be so if you have a musical theater song chosen in your repertoire, make sure you stay in the camera frame through the entire performance. So this is a singing performance that has been recorded. The first recording is of the candidate singing with an accompanist. <laughs> Thank you. 
candidate is in the room. I'm sorry, just give me a minute. Yes, the candidate is uh, and the accompanist are in the same room, but the accompanist is not visible and of course maintains the proper distance from the candidate. Now we're going to look at the same song unaccompanied because this is also allowed. Now for this, how does the student pitch? How does the candidate pitch the correct note? What you can do is have a recording of the key chord and the first note which the candidate can play back or the person filming can play back to the candidate for each of the songs before she starts like this. So that was two options for the classical singing exam. The third option, of course, is recorded accompaniment. Now let's look at the camera angles for rock and pop vocals. Now here there's a fair amount of equipment that needs to be there. Again, an on-camera view is recommended with the candidate's whole body in view. The recording that you will see does not have the whole body in view but I think it is quite adequate. All the equipment should be within reach if the candidate is operating it. If you see the first picture on the right, on the orange stool, you see the camera on a tripod. The height was not correct, so it was perched on a stool, perfectly valid. Then there's the computer in the middle from which the backing tracks are going to be played. The, camera, uh, the phone is going to be used for recording. The computer for the backing tracks, which are going to go into the Bluetooth speaker, which are going to come out of the Bluetooth speaker on the yellow stool. And of course, there is a music stand also, and the wires are safely out of the way. The second picture is an angle from the other side, it's a shot from the other side where you now see the candidate facing the camera. The computer is within his reach and the Bluetooth speaker is next to him so that he can hear the backing tracks very clearly. Sound check in this is very important because he's not using a mic. You are allowed to record the rock and pop without a mic. So please be careful that the backing tracks are not too loud. You'll see in the next video that it is perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. I'll just move this forward a little because this is a gentle accompaniment. There's things I think I want. There's things I have. So you could hear that at all times the voice was definitely above the backing track. That's what you need to make sure about. Right, moving on to strings, violin generally the most popular here. So here, the candidate needs to be able to perform comfortably. For violins, violas, the camera should have a clear view of the candidate's face, bow, and hands. For cello and harp, where chair is needed, candidate must be comfortably seated. 
So this is a good position. The camera is on a tripod. It could also be held and uh, everything is clear. Let's see how the recording came out. This is an unaccompanied performance. It's a grade one. Okay. So that was the violin performance unaccompanied and some nice dynamics came through in the recording. So let's look at drum kit now. Drums is in our RP suite of exams, rock and pop, as well as the classical. So this is the room set up first. This is a pretty small room, no problem. The candidate is going to be using an e-kit, electronic drum kit which is also allowed for the classical for these exams. Please remember, this is an interim solution. So all these allowances made will go away once the normal exams are resumed. Now the camera needs to be placed at right angles to the candidate so that hands, feet, and the whole of the drum kit can be seen. Now due to space constraints, it's not possible to do that in this room. So the candidate has arranged for the camera to be up quite high on a tripod and filming from above. The backing tracks which are needed for both the performances. Yes, classical drums, if possible, please use the backing. However, if it is not at all possible, you may play solo as in the other classical instruments but trinity guidelines say that if it's possible please use it you will not be penalized if you don't use it but try and get it going for rock and pop of course as i said earlier you have to use backing track so on the left you see an amp which is perched right in the front of your picture and the guitar keyboard or the e-kit can be plugged into the jack the jack can go into the input on the left and the backing track goes into the aux in. Okay, so we have two short recordings of classical as well as rock and pop from that camera angle. This is the rock and pop first. So the balance was very good. Now moving on to classical drums. The first piece is an unaccompanied piece. So the next two would be accompanied and uh, don't worry, I'm not showing you full videos, but we will be putting these videos once the webinars are over onto our website. 
on our YouTube channel. Right, Woodward and Brass, unfortunately, I could not get any pictures here, but the guidelines are that a side on or diagonal camera angle is recommended. The candidate and full instrument, the instrument, the full instrument must be in the camera view at all times. Now here you've got to be a little careful if you're using instruments like trombone, tuba, trumpet. There are parts of the instrument that may hide the face and fingers. So get your angles absolutely right. The examiner needs to see your blowing techniques and also how your fingers are moving. So be careful of that. Right, so that brings us to the end of the first section of the presentation where we shared some camera angles and videos of recorded exams. Now we are moving on to backing tracks because there is a lot of gray areas here. We are trying to show you that you should make it as easy and as possible and it is possible to do that. The main thing here is balance. The solo instrument and backing track sound must be carefully balanced. You heard that in all the recordings I played to you. The device that you're playing the backing track has to be separate from the camera. Make sure it is loud enough for you to hear because there are two things here. You need to be able to hear the backing track and when the exam goes to the examiner, the examiner needs to hear the backing track as well as your performance. So the recording device also has to capture it. So therefore, play it from a separate device. For the sound check, try the quietest and the loudest moments in the piece. Do a sound check and recording test before filming your entire exam performance. You may need to do several of these to come to the right balance. Drum candidates may use headphones for accompanied pieces. A separate headphone mix or a splitter should be used as the backing track must be heard on the recording as well. This is all available on our website, all these directions. I've just taken it from there and put it here in simpler terms. So let's look at the different options available to us for playing the backing tracks. So option one is guitar, keyboard, electronic, drums plugged into a small practice amp. You saw that in the drum photograph. The backing tracks to be played by an MP3 player, phone, laptop, connected to the aux input of the amp. You saw that in the picture too, the label was there. And here you can see a real close up of it in the second picture where the phone wire is going into the aux in. Your filming camera needs to be placed at a distance of three to four feet away to capture both the audio and your sound, audio of the backing track and the sound that you are emitting. Option two, now this is only for guitar and you saw it in the rock and pop guitar exam, the picture on the left, where your backing track goes into the aux input of the guitar processor, if it has one, if camera accepts TRS mini jack, output can go directly into the camera input. Otherwise, it can go to the Bluetooth or the PA speaker, which you see here on the left of the and right of the computer, or it can go into the guitar amp. So this option is only for guitars because only guitars use processors. Option three for keyboard. Backing track device to be connected to auxiliary input at the back of the instrument. Make sure your camera is positioned to capture the audio coming from keyboard speakers. There are two speakers involved here now. So it must be positioned in such a way that 
it gets the sound equally from both the speakers. Option four, vocals and acoustic guitar. Connect your MP3 player or phone to Bluetooth speaker via aux cable or via the Bluetooth connection. You can see that on the left where these two devices are placed here. The performer to stand close to the speaker, you saw that and this picture has come up again here, I put it, where the candidate had the speaker right next to him. And camera, again, three to four feet away to capture the video and audio from a single direction. So here it comes from a single direction. So camera placement is very important. Option five, now this is for all instruments. You could have a dedicated recorder which captures the audio through stereo mics or through line inputs. The video is captured from a separate device. So your video device, your camera or your phone is not capturing. It will capture the audio, but you are also recording the audio on a separate recorder. So, but remember one thing, both have to be done simultaneously during the recording, the filming of your performance. After that, it can be combined on a computer. Now, I know there are loopholes here. A lot of people have been saying that somebody else will record the audio and then layer it over the video. Now, here is where trust and truthfulness to yourself comes in. We don't want, we don't want to even think that candidates or teachers would use this kind of an option. So this is something that you need to decide whether it is right to do or not. But we and Trinity have complete trust that you will do the right thing. So this is like you can use a DAWs, which is a digital audio workstation to record your audio and then remove the audio from the camera and put, insert this audio. Now this is quite useful for the higher grades their sound quality really matters. It matters at all levels, but more so at the higher grades. So these are the options. Now, the videos that you record have to be a certain size and this is given on our website. Initial and grade one need to be 50 MB, two and 300, four and five, 150, six, 200, seven, 250, grade eight, 300, and diplomas, 350. Now, often you see when you record videos, uh, you generally do not get this kind of size so you can go and compress your videos there are good guidelines on our site and several apps have also been named or you could use any other app that you are comfortable with and is available on your android or apple phone or your tab but you need to compress the video because your whole file with everything cannot be more than one KB. So please make sure you compress your video. Here are some photographs to just show you. This is an app called Video Compress. We are not recommending this, but we're just showing you how you can do it. All apps will work almost the same way with a few alterations here and there. So you download your app and you open it. On the second photograph, you have, this is the app. Once you open it, you can then choose where to go, where your video is. It could be in downloads. It could be in your mobile videos. So you choose the album from wherever you have saved it. Once you've chosen the album, this is where your list of videos comes in. So say we are choosing uh, the singing album, Freya's uh, performance. So we choose this album, not really album, this video. It's 
666.7 MB, nowhere near the size that is allowed. So we then bring it into our video compress and click on compress video. These kind of screens will open up, maybe not exactly this, but then you can choose the size that you want to compress it to. Several options are given. So here, if you compress 33%, you will get 43.9 MB, which will fit into, because it was a grade one exam, it will fit into the required size. So what is going to happen here? You click on the 43.9 MB and your video will get compressed. Please open the video after that or check the size that it has gone down to. Sometimes you noticed in the screen before, I'll just go back to it. Though we chose 43.9, uh, it compressed to 45.6. So these are things you need to check once you are inside this app and you have compressed your video. And then you can save it. So your video is now compressed and ready for loading onto our site. So you can use, as I said, any compressing app that is suitable to your device. Now the last section we've come to of our presentation, the uploading of the performance. You have made your entry at your Trinity office. You have given your email ID. What happens here is once we submit the entries to Trinity London, you will receive your user ID directly from Trinity London, not from your local customer support office. And you have to then log into the platform, the server that has been created just for this, and upload your exam. So first of all, we will just uh, go through a video which is on our website very comprehensive video about uploading your documents and video. It's a little fast, so I will play this through and then I will take you frame by frame on the, about the guidelines.
right? So that went by fast. Uh, I'm going to now take you through frame by frame and make it a little easier for you. Step one, log on to learning.trinitycollege.com. You will receive this link when you get your email with the user name and ID. Enter username, email ID, and password on the right of the screen here. Once you have done that, log in, you will be able to log in. This is what will open up. You need to go to courses at the top of the page. When you click on courses, you will get this screen and you choose digital performance assessment at the bottom here, examiner test. So this is the link, you click on that. From here, you're taking to the, uh, taken to this kind of a page where you need to read some things as well as fill up a couple of forms before you can submit or upload your exam. So what happens here is there is a section on this page called data processing, under which there are two things. There's the privacy statement, and the data processing con consent. So the privacy statement is what you need to go to first and download it. This is what you will see. You do need to read this. Trinity is very sensitive to the fact that they need to be very careful and well within the rules of gathering data, which is personal and private. So please, read this it tells you what the role of trinity is and what is the information you have given us and what we obtain indirectly which means what we obtain from the examiners your results so you read the privacy statement and then go back to this page again and click on data processing consent you will be taken to this page where you have an option of answering the questions. Please click on that. Now in India, all markets do things a little differently. There is something saying here that if you have converted your original bookings, you would have filled the form. But for our Indian market that does not apply, we go straight to filling the form because your uh, entries have been made here to the local customer support offices. So there will be a consent form which you read through. Again, what is the subject matter, the data subject, the type of personal data, and what is the purpose of the data processing? Because we are sensitive to the fact there's a lot of personal data being gathered and it is moving from one place to the other. So after you have read this, there are two boxes here where it says, please choose one of the below. I am the candidate and I'm aged 16 or over. And the second one is I am the candidate's parent guardian if the candidate is under 16. So if you choose the top option, the candidate's full name, date of birth, exam name, this is speech and drama grade five. It could be piano grade six and the exam center name where you have registered from. And then there is a tick to be put on. I give my permission to Trinity to process the candidate's personal data as described above. And then you move to the next page. Now, if you have ticked the box below, I am the candidate's parent box, this is what will come up. The full name of the parent or legal guardian has to be given and the address. Then you can submit your answers. Once you have submitted your answer, you can now go back. You will be taken back to this upload option, exam performance upload. This is where you can upload your exam. You click on add 
submit submission. A box will open up on the right hand side of the screen you can see. You can drag and drop your files here to add whatever you need. So what is it that you're going to put here? You're going to upload a Word document which has the list of the pieces. You're going to, in the order that you're playing them, and also putting a note on which is the technical focus piece in Rock and Pop or an own choice piece. The second thing is the video that of your performance. And the third document could be a score in case you have chosen any alternative pieces in the classical or own choice pieces in the rock and pop. If you are a special needs candidate, you may have applied under the special needs category and you would have a letter giving you more time for your performance, etc. Please upload that information here also for the examiner's knowledge. Once this is here, you've dragged it here. You save your changes and this is the page that will appear. So these under in the circle, in the red circle is what you have uploaded. Please download each file and check that it is correct. Very careful of that. You must check. Please don't move on to the next step. And once you check that it is correct, in case you want to edit your submission, you can click on any of the files, remove it from there, add a different one in case there are any errors at this stage. Once that is done, in case you don't want to do anything, then you can submit the assignment and you will get to the page below where it says save changes if you've made any changes. So this is what I had said earlier. There's another picture here. So if you've not edited, you go straight to submit assignment. And here is the next page from which you are supposed to read. There is a caution that you're about to submit your exam for marking. Ensure that they're making you double check and triple check and you tick that box where the little black arrow is and they even ask you again, you read the declaration, tick the box and then you go on to continue and it's kind of done now. Your exam has been submitted. So a fair amount of steps, but not very difficult. So please, we will put this presentation out in a PDF form. We will mail it to everybody who has attended, plus those who are registered. We will also have a video recording on our website of this presentation. So we hope that it's going to be all clear now. Still, if you have some questions, please direct them to your customer support office, your local Trinity Center, so that they may answer those questions or forward them to us if they are unable to. The last slide I have here, the last two slides, is the document, the Word document with the list of your pieces in the order that you are playing them. Please make sure it's in the order. Now in Rock and Pop, there have been questions as to can we play our technical focus piece first? Yes, of course you can. Can we play two technical focus pieces? Yes, you can. But please put TF on the one, against the one that you are submitting for grading for technical focus because the marks are different. You can mix up the order as you like, but just type in the correct order on your Word document so that the examiner knows exactly what you are playing. This is how you name your files. In my earlier uh, webinar, I had given this in detail. So if we look at uh, Freya's grade one exam, the video file is named Freya Havewala underscore classical singing underscore grade one MP4. 
the word document, Daksh Mathur, the name of the candidate, underscore RP, underscore performance list, docx or doc. And if you've uploaded any PDF, the name of the candidate, underscore piano, underscore grade three, underscore scores, or special needs, whatever is applicable there. So this is the naming of the document. And before we end and go back, I'll stop sharing screen. I'd like to thank you all for choosing Trinity. This option is available only till the 31st of July. Please make use of it so that you may continue to progress to your next grade and whatever is coming up next from our digital offering. And before we end, I'd like to thank all the panelists who are there today who have tirelessly answered all your questions. Priya from Dehradun, Siddharth from Mumbai, Pratik from Mumbai, Gopal from Kochi. And of course, Mr. Saumyan is also here on the presentation in case you have some operation quest related questions. So I'm going to go back to see if there are any unanswered questions. Panelists, can you turn on your sound? Hi, uh, ma'am. I have a quick question uh, yeah. uh, from an anonymous attendee. What if I have three pages of my song? Who will turn it? There's, a qu there's uh, one more about page turns. Can you please... Uh, Yes, you may, you may have a page turner. It's actually allowed from the grade 6 to 8 level. Generally, you don't need it before that because you have two page pieces or you can photocopy and place it on your music stand for ease. The page turner should only be there from grade 6 to 8 and move away from the frame once his job is over. Uh, there still seems to be some uh, queries repeated about whether technical work, exercises, scales. We have said no, only the pieces. I think we can just say it again. It's only... The yes, to reiterate now, and uh, as we have said earlier, only your performance pieces, three pieces or four pieces as per the syllabus. No technical work, no supporting tests. Uh, for those who had uh, said that they were, it went by too fast, they were unable to get some of the information, especially regarding the MB sizes, we have advised them to visit our website or the Trinity website or the Trinity India website for all this information. All and the information is available there. Our last webinar, which was the introductory one, also has it. There is a recording of it on the website, uh, on our YouTube channel. So please refer to that or you can request for the PDF. Mostly those who attended have all received the PDF. But if you have not, please re request your customer support office for the PDF. Uh, also, the, the uh, YouTube channel is called Trinity College London, India. So you can just yes. search that and find all the videos there. Yes, or you can go from the website. Website as well, yes. Yes, there is a link from there. You can go straight there. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yes, Siddharth? Yeah, there was still uh, a question like, you know, from the last webinar, somebody asked that it was mentioned that uh, use of uh, recording software is allowed and that person is still asking, is it still allowed or no? Well, I did mention, in fact, the fifth option was all about that, wasn't it, Siddharth, if I'm yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It was all about that, how you can record externally, externally meaning in the room simultaneously when i say externally not in a recording studio while you are performing you can record your audio separately and the video separately and then put them together but it's got to be simultaneously not outside of the room where you are recording the performance yeah can i come uh, some, yeah please go on my, this is for guitar. My pedal is not working, so is it fine if someone else changes the distortion to clean from the amp? And if yes, then is it necessary to show the change and person changing it? Siddharth, what do you say to that? Well, as long as uh, the changing of from clean to overdrive and change of effects is concerned, if someone else is doing it, it's fine. Uh, that person doesn't need to be in the frame. Okay. 
anything else uh apara there was site related problem sorry uh for a uh, person who is a uh, who is site related problem placing the notation span so close to my eyes as they are having site problems so would that be okay yes absolutely okay you should have a applied under the special needs category I uh, you that. have given your uh, problem yeah i think priya you answered it yes. somebody yes. also asked if you have to announce pieces have you answered that Yes. I just I want to told you I want no to talking. Questions. Yeah, the candidate is not to talk. Can yeah, be that clear that no speaking at all from the candidate at any point. There's a separate document for updating the names of the pieces. But they have asked about scores also. I've said only scores if alternative or own choice pieces are there. Yeah, not if they are from the Trinity book. No scores to be uploaded if they are from the grade books. There are two concerns that have also cropped up again. One is about what, how to dress. I said as they would for a live exam, and if there is no dress code. The other concern is would a compressed video uh, negatively affect the sound quality? Uh, please remember that Trinity has asked you to compress the video, and it is not going to affect the sound. It is not going to affect the sound, so don't worry. People are worried about sound. i know it's not when you're recording at home it's not going to be a studio effect or the live performance but it's pretty good as you heard in the recordings all our recordings that we played have all been done at home nobody has gone to a studio and recorded and i think they're good enough to be judged what do you think priya yes absolutely that's quite right for the rock and pop vocals also should the whole body be seen the video yes it could be seen but there's not uh, that much movement in rock and pop uh, vocals so the video we showed you would be acceptable also okay. and there are some records about uh, the presentation so yes Yes, we will have the PDF, uh, Samian. I can gather the list of attendees, so yes. I will be sending it to Chennai office and with the PDF, and uh, you all can forward to everybody. Thank you, ma'am. And recording also. This one has gone through. Our last one did not. Will be on our website as soon as it's edited. We have one more webinar tomorrow. Again, a lot of people missed out. and uh, please tell your friends who did miss out that tomorrow at 2 2 o'clock we are going to have the same webinar again but that's the last one after that the recording will be available so all good samian anything else no ma'am so far from my side operation all the answer only academic need to confirm okay yes priya uh there's a very strange question which says if the candidate is not to talk for his own interpretation if the candidate is going to play a prelude or interview how will the examiner know what is happening can this huh? be mentioned in the word document which i am not quite understanding it's a long question from bertie jacobs so uh, uh has this been answered or is it unanswered no, it's unanswered it's just come up uh oh. i'm not quite sure uh see the candidate does not describe in any exam of ours why he is interpreting a piece a certain way i'm guessing that's what he's asking that uh, do we have to talk about the interpretation oh, there is no oral much. done here as far as uh, the pieces are concerned yes in oral tests you do have to answer questions but your pieces really talk it is not the candidate who needs to talk so nothing to go in the word document if you have an own composition maybe he is asking about own composition then as per the syllabus rules you should upload your composition in the format given in the syllabus i think maybe he is asking about uh, own composition or own choice own choice also you don't need to talk at all it is exactly like a live exam i'd like to say that the candidate does not speak or explain anything it's all there in the score and in their playing 
for the exam that to assess okay so if there are any other question please put them to your customer support office and we will get back to you within 24 hours thank you very much everyone for attending thanks once again to all the panelists and somyan uh, go ahead prepare for the exam enter for it and get your certificate the certificate is exactly the same as in any other exam Bye-bye, take care and stay safe. Okay.